It's Laughs from the Hood, Volume 2. Classic comedy routines from some of America's funniest comics. Featuring Steve Harvey, Arsenio Hall, Mario Joyner, Little Richard, Paul Mooney, Nipsey Russell, Louis Johnson, Sean Corvell, Diane Amos, Mark Curry, Mike Ivey, Reginald Bell Johnson, and Michael Winslow. First up, here's Steve Harvey. Oh, man, is this not nice? Is the Sandals Dune River Resort? Is this the happening thing here, ain't it? Ain't this bad? This is bad. Man, this, this is great. I done, I done had a good time the whole time I'm here. I, I thought I was gonna have an even better time when I got off the airplane and went up to that money exchange window. <laughs> Ain't they got some wild exchange down here? I gave them a hundred dollar bill. They gave me one thousand five hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm standing at the window going, ah! I'm rich! <laughs> you know, <laughs> I had so much money, I felt like a pimp. <laughs> I thought somebody had made a mistake. I was in the corner counting my money. I'm going, oh, God, oh, yes, yes, yes. And I'm from Cleveland. I'm not giving it back. <laughs> but then reality set in, don't it? Because you go buy something. We stopped halfway from the airport. I got out I said, I want a jerk chicken sandwich and a soda. That'll be $860. <laughs> about two. Now, I'm looking at y'all, and I know it's got to be in the back of your mind. You just ain't mentioned it. But you know, do y'all realize y'all the only white people here? <laughs> that ain't funny, is it? Because <laughs> y'all going, hey, you know the guy's right? Gonna, I know why you went on vacation. You, tr you thought you were going to get away from us, didn't you? <laughs> Bad move, Jamaica, wasn't it? <laughs> see, see, because in the brochure, the brochures throw you off. They say, Come and visit the lovely islanders of Jamaica. See, islander throw you off. Islander is an old African word. It just means more black people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a good time, but all in all, you had a good time here, haven't you? It's been great. This is happening, man. It's great. Have you done this? Have you have you have you done the, the water stuff, the scuba diving and the snorkeling and stuff? Ain't that right? Did you have fun? Did you have fun? That's good. I went snorkeling today. I damn near died. I, I never, you know, it's not, I, I'm from Cleveland. Why am I trying to snorkel? You know, it, snorkeling is very closely related to swimming. I can't swim. I don't know what made me think I could snorkel. <laughs> Just some stupid notion I had. And you know, I didn't want to go, but peer pressure is amazing, ain't it? You got 23 people standing on a boat going, come on! Get in the water! It's okay, it's salt water. You can't drown. <laughs> oh, yes, you can. <laughs> sport about anything. You know, I figure I'd give it a shot. So I go out on the boat, they passing out the gear. I done bought me some fins and I put them on. And they hand me my mask. Now I'm about to put my mask on when I look over and I see 23 people spit <laughs> into their mask. I'm going, now what the hell is this for? <laughs> but I figured it was one of them life-saving techniques. So I put a lot of spit in my mask. <laughs> Cause I didn't want to get down there and run out. <laughs> so you know, they say, then, then they give you the most important part to snorkeling. They give you this tube that you stick in your mouth 
and the rest of the tube is supposed <laughs> to stick out of the water at all times. This is very important information. <laughs> so they say, lay out in the water, flat, kick, and you won't go down. So I lay out in the water and I start kicking. <laughs> and you know what? I ain't going down. I'm going, yeah. <laughs> they say the secret to successful snorkeling is to keep your head parallel to the water. Okay, no problem. Until I started to see fish. <laughs> When you see fish in the ocean, you don't see one fish, you see a gang of fish. <laughs> fish be everywhere, and you can't bluff a fish on the water. You can't go, get the hell away from me! <laughs> get back, get back! Because fish just look at you and go... <laughs> so, so there's one fish swam right up against my mask. Now, I was later to learn that this was a very small fish, about the size of a guppy. But in my mind, at that moment, that was Orca the killer whale. <laughs> so I panicked because the fish started to swim under my body. <laughs> I had to follow this fish. Because, you know, Jacques Cousteau could be wrong about the feeding habits of a guppy. <laughs> so, in order to follow the fish, I had to look down. When I looked down, my tube dipped into the water. That is a bad move. <laughs> because now my next breath was not a breath. It was a drink. And folks, I ain't sipping the water, I'm drinking it. It's Miller time. So I'm just hosing it down. And you know, once you get enough water in your lungs, you have to cough. And in order to take an effective cough, you must first take a deep breath. Another bad move. Because then I went, hah, 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 hah. now I'm drowning. And people start swimming towards me, but no and I mean nobody was coming close because I had that look in my eye like, I want to hold on to something. <laughs> and they knew if I could have got my hands on one of them, I was going to try and stand on them. <laughs> so this one guy swims a little bit closer and he says, listen, don't panic. <laughs> see the expression on my face. <laughs> That's it for me, man. I gotta go. My name is Steve Harvey. And now, here's Arsenio Hall. Oh, boy. Yeah, I've been watching him all my life. People like that made it possible for me. He's a very, very funny man. I love him. Uh, my name is Arsenio, and I want to talk about things that embarrass us. Don't you do things that kind of embarrass you sometimes? I did something today in a crowded parking lot. I'm sitting in a crowded parking lot in my car. My car is running. I forget that it's running, and I restarted my engine. You ever do that, and you get that noise? <laughs> You feel real stupid, right? And there are people everywhere. It's like taking a bullhorn. I'm a jerk, everyone. Look at me, please. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You feel real silly. I'm always doing dumb stuff with the car, it seems. You ever come out of a fast food restaurant or a grocery store with everything in your arms, and you have to put it on the roof of your car to get your keys, right? <laughs> Drive away with your stuff on the roof, right? <laughs> Terrible feeling all the way home, kids calling you by your new nickname. Hey, more! And there's nothing intelligent that you can say, right? You roll down your window, 
Oh, no, thank you. I put them there. <laughs> no, I want them there. I'm not going very far. Thank you very much. <laughs> you feel stupid. You really do. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. Here's one we all do. You ever make a phone call to a friend? When they answer, you forget who you call. <laughs> I got a witness here, okay. It's a terrible feeling. They answer, hello. And we all handled it like mature adults, right? It's like, who was that? You know, it's a little strange. <laughs> you get a feeling this guy's done it before, huh? Okay. Uh, I like to go to nice restaurants sometimes. You know, every now and then you go to Jack in the Box. No, I'm just kidding. Every, <laughs> every now and then you go to a nice sit-down restaurant, you know. But you always get dumb questions in sit-down restaurants, right? You go in a nice place, the maitre d' always asks you things like, would you like to be seated? <laughs> no, bring out a balance beam. We'll eat up on that. Thank you. So, I mean, real stupid. Like Kathy Rigby or something, you know. It's, you get dumb questions. One time, a, a maitre d' sat me down, and a waitress came over, gave me a menu. She left. She came back in about 10 minutes. I was a little teed off when she came back, because it took her so long. And then she asked me the ultimate dumb question. Will you be ordering dinner this evening? <laughs> no, this is my wife, Evelyn Woods. We just come to speed read your menu. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you know, real stupid. <laughs> it's like, <clears throat> that's enough words for us. We'll just leave, you know? Dumb question. Boy, oh boy. When you watch TV, you can't help but to notice the fast food commercials and restaurant commercials. I hate to see the black commercials. You know? I mean, I hate the way they portray black people on these commercials. If you ever watch, if a white guy walks in one of these fast food restaurants, there's never any dignity lost, right? He walks in and orders, Hi, can I have a quarter pound or a large fry and a milkshake, please? You know, everything's cool. You know, that's my Caucasian voice, Mr. Burrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, everything's cool. No dignity loss. But when a black guy goes in one of these restaurants, it always has to be a reject from the Soul Train gang or something, right? I mean, you've seen these guys ordering, right? I'm hungry. Good God, I gotta have one. Oh, God. It's so strange. Hey, you're a great crowd. I gotta go. Thank you. Yeah. Now here comes Mario Joyner. <laughs> anyway, folks, how you doing? It's nice to be here. I am, uh, I'm staying in a hotel that has a male maid. I don't know if this has ever happened to anybody. They sent a the man to make up my room. Now I've grown accustomed to hearing women knock at the door, nice, pleasant voice. I wake up this morning to this. Get up, man, I gotta make it to bed. <laughs> you know, I don't care how long you planned on staying, you hear that voice, it's checkout time. <laughs> Walks in the room, 6'3", 220, starts kicking my underwear around. Pick your drawers up, man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I never felt threatened by housekeeping before. It was very scary. Within five minutes, he had me helping him make up the room. <laughs> I was gonna get into a fight with this man. Fight and housekeeping. Not that I can't handle myself, mind you. I've been taking some self-defense lessons and I've been learning how to defend myself a little bit better over the last 10 months. I started studying Tai Chi as a form of self-defense. And I think after 10 months of Tai Chi, I can defend myself against anybody that's attacking me really, really slowly, you know. <laughs> like if I ever get into a fight with a mime underwater, I can take him. <laughs> <sighs> so silly doing Tai Chi. What kind of response is that to a life-threatening situation? Give me your wallet. Not today, my friend, not today. <laughs> I think you better take somebody else's wallet. <laughs> you move too slow. You can't fight nobody doing no Tai Chi. Why do they turn to the side? What do they do that for? That seems kind of silly. If somebody's attacking you from the front, how does it do you any good to turn over here and start pushing around things that you can't even see, you know? <laughs> You're supposed to tell that guy to wait. Just wait one second, I'll be right with you. Just, I'm coming, hold on. I know if I got time to turn to the side, I have time to run. That's what I realized. I'll be using Thai Flea. That's my form of self-defense. <laughs> That's the last you'll see of me. It's like... How'd he get away? Ty Flea? I love martial arts, so I can watch any of these movies. I want to see a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. Silly movies. I love to see them. Kicking, punching, stuff like that. I just hate when these action hero guys get into movies where they try to be funny. You know. Like, uh, Sylvester Stallone tried to do a comedy. Doesn't work. You know why it doesn't work? You're not built to do these types of movies. You never see Woody Allen making movies where he's kicking people's butt, do you? No. <laughs> That's why I like Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal's the only one that doesn't even care if the movie's funny or not. He doesn't even care if he can act. That's how, you know, confident he is. 
he's not concerned about these things. They're small things as far as he's concerned. All he wants to do is kick somebody's butt, that's it. Give him 90 minutes in a movie where he can beat the hell out of somebody, he's happy. And he's taking ass kicking to a new level. I don't know if you noticed that or not. Steven Seagal is over kicking people's butt. I saw him beat up a guy one time. He broke the guy's arm in the middle of a fight. Like, that's not enough to end the fight. He kept fighting and yanking and pulling till the guy's arm broke off his body. <laughs> then he didn't stop there. He took the arm and threw the arm. <laughs> now, what are you throwing the guy's arm for? <laughs> you get into a fight with a guy. If you manage to break his arm off his body, just put the arm down where you break it, you know. <laughs> the guy knows he's been beat when he gets up swinging that nub, you know. <laughs> I think I lost. <laughs> <laughs> this is my job, this is it. Come up here, tell jokes, try to make people laugh. I think being a comedian is one of the best jobs in the world. If it's not the best job, I'm only satisfied knowing it's not the worst job. I met the man with the worst job in the world. I went to a movie theater. They have a man at the movie theater to sell you a ticket and another guy to rip it in half for you. <laughs> I can't imagine what happened. I guess they couldn't find one person that could do both of these jobs. <laughs> I'm sure if they would have looked for another day, they could have found somebody capable of selling and ripping the ticket. They must have hired the first guy that walked in there. Yeah. Can you sell and rip tickets? Well, not by myself, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll sell them, but I ain't gonna rip them, too. Come on. That's two jobs. Get me some help over here. Don't you get sick of going to the movie theater and have to walk through that little assembly line? You know, you buy a ticket, then you walk four feet, <laughs> give it to another guy, and wait for him to tear it for you? because he thinks he's the only one who can do it. One time I got kind of curious, I ripped the ticket myself. This guy nearly had a fit. Hey, who did this? Who did this for you? Matt, don't rip your own ticket. That's my job. Can you believe that? His job. He's a ticket ripping professional. How do you get a job like that? What do you do at a job interview that will impress them so much they give you a job tearing paper? You just walk in there with a handful of confetti? I think my resume speaks for itself. I'm here for the ticket ribbon position. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Hope it hasn't already been filled. <laughs> I was watching one of my favorite shows on TV. Ever watch the Discovery Channel? They had a show on about insects. It was great. They were talking about the common household fly. Common household fly, I learned, has 200 eyes in his head. 200 eyes. I thought that was very interesting information because just the other day, I smacked the fly out the air. And for hours, I couldn't figure out how he didn't see me, you know. <laughs> What bad luck to have 200 eyes, and just at the moment that somebody's trying to kill you, they're distracted looking somewhere else. You know? <laughs> I knocked it right out there. You know how you feel when you smack a fly out of midair. You feel like a ninja for about two hours or so. Huh? <laughs> Pow! I smacked him. Didn't even see me. And I got real cocky. I tried to hit a fly after it landed. You ever try to do that? Try to sneak up on the fly? You let the fly land, you start tipping over there. You think you can get them. Because being human beings, we think that's your opportunity moment to sneak up on them because they seem to be so preoccupied. I mean, the second they land, they're so busy just wiping. <laughs> you start sneaking over there. You can tell they can see you because they start wiping real slow. Because <laughs> he can see you. He's sitting there looking right at you. <laughs> it's like he's going, there's 200 people trying to sneak up on me. What the hell is going on? I better stop moisturizing and get out of here. I don't know why they're wiping that much anyway. They're going from garbage can to garbage can. What's the problem? <laughs> Can't take the Smith garbage over to the Jones house? Is that the problem? Not proper fly etiquette? <laughs> I love those nature shows. I saw a show one time about the wildebeest, the poor wildebeest. I'm sure most of you have seen a wildebeest. You ever see like a lion or a hyena eating something? That's a wildebeest you're looking at right there. <laughs> they must wake up every morning going, how in the hell do we become the fast food of the Serengeti? What happened? <laughs> Ain't there nothing else out there to eat besides us? Every animal in the jungle is trying to eat wildebeest. I was watching a show one time, I saw two hummingbirds trying to bring one down. It's ridiculous. <laughs> they don't even like me. They're just grabbing them. <laughs> wildebeest is like, get off. I feel sorry for them sometimes, but sometimes they're so stupid, they just don't know when to run. They have no idea they're in danger. They could watch their friend get killed on Wednesday by a lion. Thursday, they're looking at the lion as he's walking up on them. They're not scared at all, just looking at him like, Hey, y'all, there's a lion coming over here. Wonder what he wants. <laughs> yeah, he's all crouched down in the grass. Must be sick or something, huh? <laughs> they should run. They don't realize he's gonna kill them until he sinks his teeth into one of their necks. Then it's like, 
I think he's trying to kill us. <laughs> Run. So stupid. If I was a wildebeest, I'd never get caught. The minute I even saw somebody set up a TV camera, I would take off right there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I got to go. Thanks. Next up, Little Richard. Did you break anything? <laughs> Did you have anything to break? <laughs> Shut up. I'm so glad to see all of you. This is my first time doing this. I've done many other things. <laughs> but this is my first trip. I've always wanted to do this, but, um, Nobody ever called me to do it. <laughs> so I said, well, I told Alan Foster, I said, if you can do it, I can too. <laughs> so I knew he couldn't, but I could. <laughs> I'm just glad to be here. And it's just, um, I've always wanted to be a comedian, but I, I just didn't understand what you're supposed to do. Um, It makes me feel good when I see black people in the audience. It's just good. It just, I, I do, I feel good. I feel safe. <laughs> you know, just a wonderful thing tonight uh, to, just, to just be and just, just let it all hang out. And I just want to make you have a good time tonight. I want to make you just laugh. I want to make you scream. And I'm going to scream like a white lady. <laughs> a white lady, wait a minute. Wait a minute, shut up. You already let me finish. A white lady said, ow, a black lady said, woo. <laughs> real. <laughs> I am real. I've been real all my life. Before I ever touched the piano. like an overgrown Michael Jackson. <laughs> great audience, too. She was right. I think you should give yourself a big um, a round of applause. You're wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So, I, I, I'm a little exhausted. I'm a little tired. I, I, I may look it in the eyes. I'm, I'm very tired. I've been picking cotton all day. And... No, I don't mind the hard work. I don't mind the hard work. It's the singing. If I gotta sing, go down Moses one more time. 
I'm glad you guys have a sense of humor. That's good, because you're going to need it. But I don't want anyone to be offended by anything I say, racially, because my parents are white. Please relax. <laughs> and I have my own problems. I've got a 19-year-old teenager that lives with me, and he crossed the color line last week. And this is driving me nuts. Yes, he crossed the color line. I raised this little big-eyed boy to be a Watusi warrior. <laughs> and he turns out to be Brian Gumbel. I am so <laughs> disappointed. And this little white girl is critically white. She could drop dead from being white. She has red hair, white skin, green eyes. She fell asleep at my house. I called the paramedics. I thought she was dead. <laughs> I know with my luck, they're going to marry and have pinto babies. And they're going to drive me nuts. I'm going to try to feed them cornbreads and greens. And they're going to say, we want some cottage cheese. And I'm going to try to teach them to play basketball. And they're going to say, surf's up, dude. I can see it coming now. But we'll all get over it, won't we? Uh, did anybody see Bush on the news? Maybe I was at home by myself. Talking about drugs, the president. Did you see this? I've never seen a president do this. He pulled out drugs and a pipe. I thought he was going to smoke it. Is he on drugs? <laughs> no, it was too weird for me. It's too weird. I don't like this image of blacks and drugs. That's all you see on TV, blacks and drugs. Police, blacks, and drugs. We don't own black airlines. We don't bring drugs in this country. There are no black airlines. It's true, it's no black airlines. We don't, I know some of you are stunned, you can't relate to this, but this is reality. I wanna see the special white people in drugs. We don't own airlines, we don't own big ships. Uh, we don't have banks that launder the money, we don't do that. I just think we're being used. <laughs> but things are wonderful in the world for black people. Miss Black America, and we can tell she's black, isn't it great? <laughs> Miss West Virginia didn't like it, did you see her? Oh, she was mad, the little blonde with blue eyes. She got on that telephone, mama, mama, cancel the party, mama. <laughs> That little picket in one, you canceled that party. And that little Buddha head came in first runner up, mama. I think it's great. It's happening all over the world. New York's gonna have a black mayor. You know that come November. Isn't that great? Oh, come on. You know it's great. It's great. The Big Apple is gonna be the big watermelon, and I can't wait. I think it's wonderful. It's hard for me to watch TV commercials because, I don't know, I'm in a different kind of mood. It's, I can't watch it because I don't like the commercials that they have for black people. To be in a commercial, you've got to be a black little wrinkle-up raisins. I know people think that's cute, but I don't think that's cute. You've seen it, a little black wrinkle-up raisin. Heard it through the grapevine. That's not cute. Poor little Ray Charles. They say, oh, he's blind, he won't know, make him a raisin. What I see. Now Michael Jackson's a raisin. All raising that, I don't know, but he's a raisin. Now, you've seen it. If I had my way, I'd have marshmallows with arms and legs, little white marshmallows singing surfing. Surfing USA. See, you don't think that's cute, do you? Now, I'll tell you cute. White people have cute commercials. You've seen them. What you eating? Nothing, honey. White people play the piano. What you playing? Nothing, honey. You've seen how cute it is. What's white and 10 inches? Nothing, honey. <laughs> Nothing, honey. Black people can be cute. We can do that. What you eating? None of your damn business. We know how to be cute. <laughs> we can be cute. It is, it is a responsibility being black in America, being a black male, it's a responsibility. I get so tired of getting on the elevator, white people get off. I drive down the street, they turn the other way. If I stop at a red light, they lock the doors. I'm tired of going into stores to shop. I start a parade. 12 white people follow me around. Can I help you? Can I help you? Only one works there. It's a responsibility. It is. I can't take it. I can't make up stuff like this. Two weeks ago, I'm late for an appointment. I have my car parked cat corner to a white woman's. I, I'm not making this up. I couldn't. I'm running. I'm late. She's running. We see each other. She turns and runs the other way. <laughs> I chased that woman for 15 blocks. <laughs> Someone get you, white lady. <laughs> she took her shoes off. If she'd have been to the Olympics, she'd have won all the gold. Debbie, stop, you're killing me. Anyway, <laughs> it's true. And I go to movies all the time, and movies are too much. I can't take it anymore. Movies, 
I call them white films because they get to be too white for me. Three men and a baby. Come on, how white can it get? Come on. That's why I wrote the black version. Three black men and it ain't my baby. Uh, <laughs> then I saw something with Jason, part eight. Now, Jason has a gold credit card. He's traveling now. He's a frequent flyer. You saw him, right? He's in Manhattan now. And they got the little music. Dun, 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 dun. Manhattan, Jason takes it. New York has a new problem. Ch -ch -ch -ch. <laughs> but you notice Jason didn't go to Harlem. You noticed that, didn't you? Because <laughs> them black people were going to show Jason how to use that knife. <laughs> and when you shoot Jason, he gets up. They said, oh, put him on that barbecue grill. Let's have some Jason McNuggets. Well, look, you guys have been fun for me. Thank you very much, and enjoy the show. Enjoy it. Thank you. Now, here's Nipsey Russell. When women said I was a model lover, I was so happy I wanted to sing. Then I looked it up, and it says that a model is a miniature of an actual thing. <laughs> OK, I'll try you again. <laughs> it was only a nightmare. It was only a dream. But it tortured me all through the night. Six women were fighting to make love to me, and the ugly broad was winning the fight. <laughs> That's a little better, huh? I don't know. But that's the way it's been going for me. It's really bad. I called Dial a Prayer, and a boy said, go to hell. I don't know. <laughs> well, it, it is very nice to be here. I have to thank Bud for inviting me. It's really so nice. I haven't been back to Los Angeles since the Olympics. My cousin won a gold medal in the Olympics. Yeah, he was getting ready to do the shot put. He accidentally backed into a javelin thrower and won the high jump. But <laughs> I have noticed that there is a pronounced preoccupation with slenderness here. I don't know why. Everybody's on a diet. I was on a diet. I was on a crash diet. I dieted three days, and then I crashed into a bakery. I, <laughs> but why does everybody want to be slim? Who wants a bony Maroney? I am here to set the record straight about sex appeal and overweight. It is nice to be neat and look petite, but if you want to feel some heat, you got to have some meat. Hey! Yeah, never mind the speed. I want to ride in comfort. Anyway, as... <laughs> Please, no individual laughing. We'll all laugh together or nobody laughs. <laughs> As Bud just pointed out, I was uh, in uh, Atlantic City. I had a great time there. If you ever go there, the only way you'll double your money is fold it and put it back in your pocket. <laughs> I uh, also went to Washington, D.C. I went to Washington, D.C. to entertain the National Council of Negro Republicans. Three of the nicest guys you... <laughs> I don't know. So nice to be here. And uh, I did go to Washington, D.C., and I had a great time there. And, uh, well, I was in Atlantic City, and I went to tell you about this. There's some strange things that happened in those casinos. One night, <laughs> I was working at Harris. A woman came into the casino wearing a fur coat and nothing on under the fur coat. Took the coat off and threw it down, grabbed the dice, rolled the dice, picked up all the money, put on the fur coat, and walked out of the casino. The pit boss walked over to the croupier and said, hey, did she make a point? He said, hell, man, I thought you were watching the dice. <laughs> so much talk about sex today that I have made a vow to find the guy who invented sex and see what he's working on now. Next up, it's Lewis Johnson. All right, man, nice to be home, man. It is, it is nice to be home. I just finished doing two weeks of one-nighters through Virginia, working these black lung coal mining towns. <laughs> you tell a joke, all you hear is, <laughs> he's funny. <laughs> and I had 
got this rental car while I was down there, Geo Metro. Okay? Man, you know you're in a slow car when people in Gremlins are passing you up, okay? This damn car has a manual airbag in it, okay? There's somebody's coming at you like, ah! I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> then I get home, man, and my wife is angry about something. I know she's angry. I mean, she taped Oprah over our wedding tape. <laughs> okay, I mean, <laughs> you know, something about nonverbal communication. <laughs> I didn't say nothing to her about it. <laughs> <laughs> she's too headstrong. My wife is, she, she will tell somebody off in a minute. Which is why I married her, because I wanted her to speak my mind. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to spend time formulating the thought. <laughs> she told you I didn't want it, didn't she? <laughs> and I've been married so long that if I was to suddenly get divorced, I wouldn't know what to say to a woman in a nightclub. I'd probably walk up to her and say, I'm going through the store. You want me to get you something? <laughs> speak up, I'm leaving. Don't be bitching when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something happens, man. You put a ring on your finger, something psychic happens. My wife's all the way across town. If I take my ring off, I'll get a call in two minutes. Hey, what the hell are you doing with your ring off? <laughs> I was just washing my hands. <laughs> Please don't put my stuff on the porch. <laughs> gets mad at me, she always says, oh, stop joking. You know you love me, you said I do. I go, no, I didn't. I said, do I? <laughs> You've been watching that videotape the wrong way. I watch it backwards, because you get that happy ending. <laughs> like, like, the rings are off, they're backing out of the church. <laughs> But that's your spouse, man. You love them. But where'd the word spouse come from? It's such an ugly word. It sounds like a pest problem in your house. <laughs> right? People come in, the front room is a mess. Girl, looks like you got a spouse problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been meaning to get some spouse traps. <laughs> What's a spouse trap? Oh, that's an armchair and a remote. <laughs> Too real, man. You gotta get out and have fun. And people do stupid things to keep their marriages together. There's a lady going around the country teaching women how to strip for their husbands, which is cool. But you know she's gonna try it at the wrong moment. Like, I can see me sitting there watching the basketball game. All of a sudden, the lights go down, music comes on, my wife is wiggling around in front of the TV. Ooh, that's real nice, honey. Here's a buck. Me and the guys wanna watch the game. Okay? Do you mind? Man, every time. And of course, there's always that one guy going, say, man, can you break a 10? <laughs> Your wife's good, I want a temper. <laughs> and see, people laugh at stuff like that because it, it, it has to do with sex. But sex sells, and sex will always sell. I saw the Sally Jesse Raphael show. They had the mother-daughter strip teams on, OK? which is weird enough in the first place. But this lady's daughter walked out, she had 48 double F. <laughs> Damn, four, that's bigger than my head, man. <laughs> he check it. If you're making love to her, she's on top, you'd have to have a snorkel. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> No more. <laughs> Let me up. I can't hear the stereo. Let me up. <laughs> Was that a little too much of a visual right there? <laughs> <laughs> nice to be home. The one thing about coming home, though, man, is they, they, they things get so weird here in Denver. They built the McDonald's inside of Denver General Hospital. That's gross, man. <laughs> How are you gonna have an advertising meal when there's some guy walking through McDonald's? <laughs> hey, them fries look real good. Can I have a couple? <laughs> and you can have the whole bag, Holmes, go right in. 
<laughs> hey, what you have, a triple bypass? Have a thick shake on me, man. <laughs> you want to tie it up? Your butt's hanging out. <laughs> Thought I'd tell you. <laughs> well, put one on backwards so you don't get that draft. <laughs> Covered with pink pimples. <laughs> Wait, let me get a magic marker. Look, the state of Kentucky. <laughs> Medicine is stupid. They're arguing about cryogenics, man. You know where they supposedly freeze your body for 500 years. I mean, you know what happens to stuff when you leave it in the refrigerator for a little too long, man. <laughs> <laughs> costs 130,000 bucks to freeze your body. Doesn't cost for the freezing. It costs to have a guy come in there every six months and put a new box of baking soda in. <laughs> make sure blue and yellow make green. <laughs> I can see some guy in the lab going, come here for a second, Johnson. You didn't close the baggie up real good. He's got little white spots on his head. And look, his butt's all fuzzy, too. And who drew the state of Kentucky on his behind? You know the capitals over there. Then the check costs 20,000 bucks just to freeze your head. Now, I'm all for saving some money, but... <laughs> Why freeze just your damn head? I mean, let's say they bring you back in 500 years, they can cure you, but they can't hook you up to a body. What do they do? Put you in the window so you can watch traffic go by? <laughs> and the window go, ooh. <laughs> hey, baby, where you going? <laughs> hey, come back here. <laughs> I mean, you're just a head, man. You probably have the meanest friends in the world. <laughs> They're probably walking every day going, hey, Lou, think fast. <laughs> I'm Lewis Johnson. God bless you guys. Peace. I'm out. All right. Now here's Sean Corbell. Hey. How's everybody doing? <laughs> and the rest of us? I think I said everybody. Don't get quiet on me all of a sudden, y'all. I'll take that personal, boy. It's like I walk up here, you're like, well, he don't look funny. <laughs> <laughs> Supposed to be happy. You're here in LA right now. Man. I like this town. This town gets a bad rap, but they got some good people here, boy. Strangers talk to you out here. You don't get that everywhere you go, boy. Because I'm originally from back east. You know, you don't talk to strangers back east. You talk to a stranger back east, you freak them out. You're like, hey, how you doing? What, what do you want? <laughs> So that's really cool, y'all do that out here, man. Don't stop doing that. I know it's hard these days, because it's so crazy out here, you feel like you talk to a stranger. They might shoot you or mug you or something like that. But I'm like, if somebody's gonna mug you, they're gonna mug you anyway. <laughs> I'd rather them be happy mugging me than all pissed off. You know? <laughs> no, because I've been mugged by a pissed off person. It ain't pretty. <laughs> He's yelling at me the whole time, give me your money, give me all your money. I'm like, I don't know what you mad about. I'm the one getting ripped off here. <laughs> So I am Sean Corvell. I've been doing comedy for a while, man. You learn a lot about comedy when, you, when you've been doing it as long as I have. You find out you can't explain the jokes. If you tell the joke you have to explain, forget it. It doesn't go over well if you have to explain the jokes. Well, jokes are a lot like that Clinton health plan in that way. <laughs> <laughs> this a Clinton crowd? Y'all support Clinton? <laughs> Two people, yeah. <laughs> See, I don't understand this. It doesn't matter who the president is. No one ever admits to voting for him. Because people used to do this when Reagan was in office. I'd say, oh, how many people voted for Reagan? Nothing. The man won by a landslide, but nobody voted for him. <laughs> Bush got the same thing. No one ever admitted to voting for him. See, this is why I think there are aliens from other planets to come here. <laughs> Just to screw with us like this. Because yeah. somebody bought all those BG albums also. <laughs> and they're still here, because somebody buying the Michael Bolton albums. <laughs> I couldn't be president myself, boy. Media's hard on a president, man. They'd come down. See, and I get my feelings hurt easy. So I, especially when they start talking about my family and my wife, I'll be fighting every press conference, man. I'll be coming out, I'll be like, before I answer any questions, I want the man to call my wife a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure eventually we'll see a black president. Yeah. I don't know, what do you think we're gonna see first? A, a woman president or a black president? How many people say women? By applause. <laughs> How many people say black president by applause? 
Exactly. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah, a black woman. <laughs> I can't wait for that. Just to see her get that head to move it, huh? <laughs> I know. She'll be coming out. Hell yes, I'm raising taxes. Who you think's gonna pay for this stuff? Tax fairy? <laughs> Campaign slogan be, you go, girl. <laughs> Thank you for contributing to the joke, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's cool to see y'all here. I got to see my parents recently, man. I haven't seen them in a while. I've been on the road for so long. My dad's at that age now where he's wearing his pants real high. Man, you know, if there are any men out there wearing them pants, I put them pants down. You are embarrassing your children, man. Just put them and he used to do it just to discipline us. You know, he'd be like, you kids, knock it off in there. You could actually gauge how mad he was by how high he pulled up his pants. He'd be like, don't make me have to come in there. We'd be like, he's only up to his navel. We can still play. <laughs> now, my mom, my mom was a disciplined lady. My mom used to whoop my ass, boy. I used to get ass whoopings all the time. I was bad, too. I deserved them, man. So we don't call them ass whoopings these days. We call them... A caning, I believe, is what it's called. <laughs> Why don't they just call that what it was? A good old-fashioned ass whooping, oh, yeah. And I was watching this kid talking about it. You know, I feel bad for him if he didn't do it. But man, if you did it, we have some arrogant people in this country. You can't be going to other countries disrespecting people's rules, yeah? You gotta clean that up. And I think we need to get some ass whipping in this country because these kids are getting crazy out here. <laughs> kid didn't even get an ass whipping. He got four hits. Man, you can't even have a conversation with four hits. My mom used to whoop my ass talk all day long. Didn't I tell you not to? But you went and did it anyway after I told you. She run out of words, start scatting. Get, get, and get, 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 get. And never once was I on the news. <laughs> And then you know what kills me is we went over there and protest that. We went over there and protest them doing, man, we should be ashamed of ourselves. As many foreign visitors we done shot up in this country this year, bro. <laughs> Shooting foreigners here became a pastime. You see people waiting by the car rental agencies. Okay, quiet, here comes one. Pull. <laughs> I got him, <'em>, that's mine. <laughs> then we're gonna go over there. We don't want you spanking our citizens. <laughs> <laughs> Got so bad we made the president make a statement. You know he felt like a fool. I don't know how he kept a straight face, man. He's like, we, uh... <laughs> we don't condone this sort of thing, this uh, beating of the felons. We don't do that here in the States. <laughs> you know, the Singapore people are like, oh, really? Well, let's run that Rodney King video real quick and see what <laughs> You see the little Singapore guy, ah, oh, rook, ass ripping. <laughs> hey, look at y'all, I gotta get out of here. Thanks for hanging out with me. And now, Diane Amos. So, I won 14,750 bucks on the Wheel of Fortune. But I did not do that happy dappy black woman jump up and down boobs at the chin thing, okay? I can, but I didn't. They don't have that much money, you know? Got my check, quit my day job. Loved my day job, though. I used to work for a store called Sizes Unlimited. Does anybody know that store? Uh, okay, well, for those of you who really don't know, or those of you in denial, no. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the big girls' clothes time. Now, the little girls' clothes time chicks are always like, oh, yes! <laughs> those chicks, forget them. We do it for the big girls in our store. We're like, boom, get out of here. Clothes time! <laughs> Men would shop with their women. No matter what they wore, they wanted to wear heels. Men always want us to wear heels. Playing basketball, anything, you know? <laughs> we get phone calls from our men with wild ideas, baby. When I come home tonight, I want you to serve me my dinner and some pumps. <laughs> so when he gets here, we're standing right there in front of that hot oven with our little apron on and our big old pumps, getting his dinner out of the oven. Got a baby on one hip, we're kicking toys out of the way, we're answering the phone, and he's like, we're supposed to go, thanks, babe, more later. <laughs> but I like to see men in the kitchen. Women, okay? I love to see them in the kitchen. They get that sexy pose while they're doing dishes. I'm like, oh, yes, babe, and I love to, ow. <laughs> yeah, but then how do you men act? Hey, 
Hey, I'm doing dishes. <laughs> Okay, I love my man. As soon as I found him, though, that's when all my ex-boyfriends started popping up, you know? And I thought to myself, hmm, don't let your new man do what the ex-men did. Isn't that true? We punish our men ahead of time so they never do stuff that the exes did, <laughs> which is good. I like it because all kinds of women do it all kinds of ways. I love the way white women do it. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Not in this lifetime. I'm like, tell them, honey. And I love to watch the Hispanic women. Forget you, Tony. Forget you, Tony. Tony, forget you. I got three brothers, Tony. Do anything for me. I need Tony. I don't need you, Tony. Forget you, Tony. <laughs> I love you, Tony. <laughs> now, us black women are a lot less wordy than all that. Mm hmm. See, fair warning, guys, that means leave that alone, okay? Because that is what will get you on Oprah's show, talking about, I did not think she would hit me in the head with our dinner. <laughs> but see, a smart man's not gonna follow his woman to the kitchen to argue anyway. Isn't that kind of stupid? If you want to argue with your woman, go in the living room where she doesn't want her lamps broken, no blood on her carpet, okay? <laughs> Do not follow us into the kitchen to argue, because we will hurt you in the kitchen. Because we know where everything is. And you don't. You can live with a man seven, eight, nine years. He will walk into the kitchen one day and go, honey, where are the forks? <laughs> the kids are going, dad, they're by the potholders. Mm -mm. So I have some very politically white friends who overzealously celebrate Black History Month. <laughs> this past February, they decided that this was my year to learn how to ski. Okay. If you take your black friend skiing, there are a few things you should tell them. Like tell them, oh, by the way, you'll be carrying a lot of stuff uphill. <laughs> so I thought, cool. I took my half day lesson. At the end of the day, I'm skiing down the baby slopes. I'm like, wow! And then I realized how fast I was going. I was like, man, I could be like the guy in the end of the Wild Water Sports video. My legs fine, my black broken, and all that. So I thought, hey, snowplow, please tell your black friends, gravity in this kind of butt ain't no snowplow big enough. <laughs> You can snowplow all day, you're not gonna stop. So then I thought, I'll throw myself down. So I did, became a huge snowball, took an entire Norwegian family at the pretzel stand. <laughs> they don't know what hit them. Oh, what was that? Snowball had eyes, it was me. <laughs> Got on the ski lift, I thought, oh, poop, I'm on, excellent. Please tell your black friends about the dismount. <laughs> when your chair comes to a stop, hop off and ski away. I'd rather give birth. <laughs> I hopped off, boom, there I was. You know they couldn't get around me. The next 12 people had to stop the chair, everything. I'm going, get off me. <laughs> when you get up on skis, just lay on your side and roll up. Where do people put your ankles while you're rolling up? Mine were up my butt. Anybody else? <laughs> Not my sport. I do have a sport, though. I'm a camping babe. Anybody else camping babes? Yes. Oh, yes. Most of the time, women don't like to go camping, but I'm like, take me camping. We have macho moments. We just don't tell the guys about it. You know, on the campground, we're like, well, I don't think I'll be going in that little bathroom. Psst. Hey, campers, how you doing? <laughs> See, die the campfire, good. Toilet paper, I don't think so. I'll drip dry. I'm like, yes. <laughs> On the men are disgusted, but these are the same men that would go to the bathroom and come back in their little bikini underwear with that little silver dollar pee stain, and we're going, <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> Our kids are like, Mom, I ate a worm. I feel like that chick on that carpet commercial. I don't care. That's OK. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't care. Campground's cool. Some women are afraid. Some women are afraid of everything, the dark, animals, bugs. I'm afraid of nothing. I see brown bears. I just look them right in the eye, pull up to a tree and scratch. <laughs> they just throw me a paw and keep on going. I don't worry about it. And I love those women who are really fastidious in their homes. They clean everything all the time. They walk over to trees, pick up little sticks with raccoon pee and doodle on them and go, mmm, marshmallows, aren't these good? <laughs> like, honey, that is barbecued raccoon dung. <laughs> Not so good. So I come off the campground, and that's when I start watching TV. I like to watch the old black and white movie channel. But some of the worst racial stereotypes in the world started then. The way they depicted the black women and the white women, always the same. 
black woman in front of the stove, wearing that head rag, looking like some pancake box escapee. <laughs> Messenger comes in with bad news. What? The barn's on fire. The horses have ran away and the pigs are frying. Well, I'll tell you what you do, baby. You go on out back. I got two horses that love special. Just in case something like this happens, go ahead. <laughs> and then you go to the right kitchen, and things are really different. She's standing in front of the stove in a chiffon dress. Messenger comes in and she's like, what? What? Well, I, well, I, oh. I love that. I really do because I wish I could get some bad news to Fanny every time. Miss Amos, I'm sorry, but your checking account's overdrawn, $400. What? What? Well, I, and who's gonna pick my big ass up off the bank's floor? Who would that be? <laughs> Thank you, Imran, that's it! Thank you! Now here comes Mark Curry. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing, sir? Got a Jacques Cousteau look. How you doing? You do, you like Jacques? Remember Jacques Cousteau? Yeah. Remember he knew everything about the great killer white shark but would never get in the water? Remember that? This is the killer white shark. Mm. <laughs> Capable of biting a man in half. I would let my daughter Philippe go in. <laughs> Philippe, like, why I got to go in, man? <laughs> I, I was driving a U-Haul van the other day, and I sideswiped someone's car. I tore it up, and I was the only one there. So I said, man, I'm the only one there. I'm supposed to leave a note. So I did the right thing. I left a note. Put on a note. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I think the bravest job you can do? To be a policeman in LA. I don't understand that. Being a policeman in LA, that's the bravest job you can do. Because I couldn't just pull some wanted criminal over and just ask him for some ID. I just couldn't do that. I'll park about 100 feet from him, turn on all my lights, get on my microphone. This is the LA Police Department. Please step out of your vehicle completely naked <laughs> and stand in the center lane. If you move, I will shoot you. <laughs> If you didn't get out of the car, I just drive off backwards. You've been lucky. <laughs> you know what I like to do? I like to call little kids up and pretend like I'm Big Bird. Because they don't believe Big Bird, really. Call little kids up. They'll answer the phone. Hello? Hi, this is Big Bird. Why don't you do Big Bird a favor? Uh-huh, what you want me to do, Big Bird? I want you to put your mother's purse on the porch. <laughs> Talk about police. Yeah, but you know what? I never get tickets when I drive. I never get tickets. You know why? I pretend like I stutter and spit a lot when the police pull me over. <laughs> they do. They walk up to me. How you doing, young man? You were driving kind of fast. What's your name? Where do you live? <laughs> My name is... <laughs> Pretty stony like this. Uh, just go on. Drive careful. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then drive by shootings was freak me out. Drive by shootings always scary because it's always mistaken identity, the wrong person shot. Cause they're going 70 miles an hour, they don't know who they shooting. So I'm so scared. I walk down the street, I make sure I'm not a mistaken identity. I develop a cool walk. I walk down the street like this. <laughs> I see two car headlights coming, I'll really get into it. <laughs> dude be trying to say, God damn, look at that dude. Just say no, man, leave that stuff alone. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I went out the other day, met this really nice woman. She was sitting at a bar. Beautiful. Walked up to her. All I did was, uh, how you doing? Uh, can I buy you a drink or something? She was, had attitude. No, you may not. Uh -uh. I'm looking for somebody to sweep me off my feet. You think you can sweep me off my feet, huh? I said, yeah, I can sweep you off your feet. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you want a drink, too? There you go. Because <laughs> women always talk so much mess. Women always, you hear women on the phone, women just gab, 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 gab. Women on the phone, girl, what you talking about? You can't go out. Girl, you should be able to do what you want to do. Ain't no man should ever tell you what to do. Girl, I work eight hours a day. Girl, being pregnant in bed, but that's over. This is the 80s. Girl, I do a rope. I do whatever I want to do. Ain't no man will ever tell. Just a minute. He coming. I got to go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> because 
because women will get you killed. Really, women will get you killed. I was on Venice Beach, saw this beautiful woman, gray body, walking a little teeny itty bitty bikini, just walking. And I'm staring at her. And she was walking with one of them big Lyle Alzado type big giant guy. <laughs> and he was ready to kick my butt. He called me staring. Say, man, why are you staring at my woman, man? I'm gonna kick your butt. <laughs> I played it off. <laughs> I was staring at you. <laughs> Big as a supermarket, and look at those groceries. <laughs> <laughs> and women, because women always wear clothes, women wear clothes so tight, they can't even walk in them. Women wear clothes so tight, they be walking like this. Like penguins, that's why they always get their purse snatched. They can't <laughs> And then get mad when men look at them. What you staring at? I'm staring at your big butt, that tight dress, you can't even walk. <laughs> I saw one woman had some tight jeans on, some guest jeans. You know how guest jeans got that little triangle? Jeans were so tight, she had stretched that triangle made it like a yield sign. <laughs> she was slowing down traffic. <laughs> Jesus, I don't remember a yield sign here. I... Oh, man. I made love to one woman. You make, I love making love. I made love to one woman. She was making so much noise. The, my neighbor was knocking on my wall. She was making so much, she sounded just like an ambulance. She was like, oh, oh, oh. the window car that pulled over. <laughs> Jesus, I hear ambulance, I just don't see one. <laughs> First a yield sign, now I'm this. <laughs> women in... <laughs> you know, I was talking about women in tight clothes. And you know what? That's why you see women get up and go to the bathroom together in pairs. You know why? They help each other take off those tight clothes when they get in that bathroom. <laughs> They do, they be in the bathroom and say, come on, girl, help me take it off, come on, come on. They get them clothes off, be like, oh, God, I remember the fame, oh, oh. Thank you, I'm Mark Curry, thank you. Next, it's Mike Ivey. Thank you, thank you very much. Very nice to be here in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's nice to be anywhere, almost. <laughs> What are you looking at me like that for? It is nice to be here. We have a lot of stuff going on. Oh, man, I got to tell you, that, 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 that last election, that presidential election, I was at such a loss. I had no idea who to vote for. Look at the, the choices we had. Ross Perot, a man who says, well, you know, I'm not going to hire homosexuals or adulterers, which pretty much meant if he was elected, half the people in Washington was out of a job. <laughs> And then we had Bill Clinton. Now, Clinton, I could have liked this guy if he had came out and said something like, you know, that war in Vietnam, that whole thing was terrible. I did everything I could to make sure I didn't get sent over there, so now I can be elected president and make this an even better country to live in. Sure, we wouldn't believe it, but it sounds better than that stuff he's spitting out. <laughs> well, you know, I smoked something 20 years ago, and I didn't like it, and I didn't inhale, so I never tried it again. Yeah, pee on my back and tell me it's raining, okay? <laughs> Let's go. You didn't inhale, you didn't smoke. End of story, right? This guy apologized for everything. He apologized for playing golf at an all-white country club. Like, somehow, we don't know why they call it the Masters Tournament, you know? <laughs> <laughs> apologizing for slavery. Well, I'm sorry about slavery, but you didn't expect me to pick that cotton, did you? <laughs> hey, that's a good point, Bill. I, I never really thought of it that way. <laughs> and then we had George Bush. George Bush had a lot of chances to be presidential. There was a big hurricane down in Florida. He flew in like those people didn't already have enough trouble <laughs> and tried to rename the storm. This hurricane, this hurricane, what the heck's a hurricane? <laughs> this hurricane was devastating. I declared this a disaster area. Well, folks, I could see that on TV. <laughs> Do you have to fly all the way down there? I'll save you a lot of money. Let me, President. I'll just flip on CNN. Damn. <laughs> they took a direct hit. <laughs> Let's see what the Weather Channel says. 
I mean, it's like the people who lived there had no idea what just happened. Hey, Billy, you remember when the roof blew off the house? <laughs> yeah, and I said, what is this? Apparently, it's a disaster. I just couldn't come up with the right word. <laughs> Thank God for George Bush, huh? <laughs> Now, I'm afraid we could have used Jesse Jackson in this race, man. That would have added some color, at least. <laughs> and maybe we could have got a couple of new Jackson jokes out of it. Those others were good. Remember 88, those good Jackson jokes? Like, well, Jesse, what do you think of Beirut? Well, I thought Hank Aaron was a much better ball player, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse was born in South Carolina. They said, well, Reverend, any thoughts on Syria? Yeah, I prefer grits myself. <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> How about the fence? Oh, don't worry. I'm gonna move that in a little closer to the house. <laughs> and paint it white. Well, I feel safe already. <laughs> what about the abortion bill? Already paid that. <laughs> I am somebody. <laughs> yeah, early in the campaign, they were passing out that bumper sticker, Run, Jesse, Run. <laughs> <laughs> And they had to stop, I guess, too many people putting it on the front of their cars. <laughs> run, Jesse, you better run. Hey, what y'all doing? We going Jesse hunting. <laughs> How you do that? Just get in the truck, we'll show you. <laughs> I, I, I can't even think about Bush without thinking about quail. Know what he said? This guy tried to get my vote by saying, well, you know, I would have been at a disadvantage to, to debate Gore because Gore went to those expensive private schools and I went to American public schools. That's gonna get my vote? What's he saying? I'm just as stupid as you. <laughs> I don't know what's happening in the country. I, I was watching Maury Povich the other day and I saw these people arguing about this new Jeffrey Dahmer movie that's coming out. What happened with that thing? Wisconsin spent five million dollars to discover that Jeffrey Dahmer is sane. Jeffrey Dahmer's sane? <laughs> well, let's review. <laughs> they found heads in the guy's refrigerator. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> I've been in a lot of houses, folks. I looked in a lot of refrigerators. But the next time I open the refrigerator door and see a human head in there, I'm gonna go out on the limb. This guy is crazy. <laughs> you know what really upset me? <laughs> Thank you. you. You know what upset me? The neighbors had no idea this was going on. All these people going in that apartment, nobody coming out. But soon as Dharma went to jail, they remembered, didn't they? Well, you know, we did kind of smell something. <laughs> For a whole year, had smelled something and never told. We thought he might have had dead animals in there. <laughs> really? And you didn't look. You look like a pretty normal guy, sir. But if you live next door to me and I thought you had dead animals in your apartment, I'm telling. <laughs> you don't have to wait till you see me on TV saying something like, yeah, you know, we used to hear sawing and screaming all time tonight. We just thought it was some kind of carpenter like to work weird hours. Yeah, three in the morning. Yeah. Oh, God, don't cut my leg off. Hey, must be working on that table again. Man, I don't know what's... Oh, did you hear about this? Kid up in New York shot his own mother, mistook her for a deer. Grazing in the backyard. His own mother, his own backyard. Now, it occurs to me if you start out with a story like this, you gotta stick with it, right? <laughs> I'm sure there were some hairy moments at the police station when they tried to get to the bomber. It's just to find out that all they really had was a kid who needed to spend some more time with his mother. And when he wasn't with him, they should be showing him pictures of his mother. Okay, Johnny, listen up. This is a picture of your mom. And this, John, this is a photograph of a deer. You notice any difference? Stop fidgeting, son. We'll go over it again. This one here, this is your mom. No, put the gun down, John, please. First of all, what was that woman doing grazing in the backyard? See, that's what I'm thinking. She had been grazing in the dining room like a normal person. This would have never happened. I'd have to be talking about something else now. Later in the article, you know what it said? Neighbors were shocked, but not surprised. <laughs> What's that mean? 
They just waiting for something like this to happen? Well, you know that boy was always playing with that gun, and that woman did look a lot like a elf. <laughs> then we're waiting, it was just an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> Then I picked up the newspaper and read about this guy who beat his wife over the head with a frozen squirrel. <laughs> a frozen squirrel? What do you do, keep one in the freezer till you need it? <laughs> what could make somebody beat a person over the head with a frozen squirrel? I mean, I get mad at my girlfriend just like everybody else. Well, everybody don't get mad at her, just the people who know her. But you know, <laughs> I would never beat her over the head with a frozen squirrel. I mean, I thought about it, but I realized after you hit her a couple of times, the squirrel's gonna start to thaw out. It ain't gonna hurt nearly as much. You're gonna beat somebody over the head, use a hammer. You already made the commitment. I mean, come on, a frozen squirrel. Bam, 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 bam. Now, cook it. Okay. You want gravy? <laughs> no, somebody asked me the other day, why are there no black people on the United States Olympic swim team? Like I'm supposed to know the answer to a question like that. And what do I look like, the shell answer man? <laughs> I mean, what does it look like I just got a lot of answers in my head waiting for people? I, I hate questions like that. Like when people ask, Mike, Mike, be honest, tell me the truth. What do black people think? <laughs> uh, what do black people think? I, I don't know, the meeting's Tuesday. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Now here's Reginald Bell Johnson. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. <clears throat> now I know what you people are thinking, you know. Please, No, no, but I, I know what you people are thinking. Another male model trying to make it as an actor, I know. <laughs> Underneath all these clothes is a body designed by Schwarzenegger. <clears throat> but yes, my name is Reginald Vell Johnson. And yes, it is my real name. Whenever people hear that name, they have the same reaction. They say, funny, you don't look Norwegian. <laughs> Well, I'm not, I'm from Finland. <laughs> no, actually, I'm from Queens, where I grew up as the middle child of five kids. <clears throat> yeah. But take it from me, you don't want to be the middle son. You know, you're just not as important as the other ones, you know. Like, you could tell that by the way my dad introduced us, you know. He'd say, this is my oldest son, Dean. Dean, chip off the old block, he's gonna be a businessman, look at him. This is my baby son, Barry, he's gonna be a football player. Look at him, love him. And over there in the corner under the table, that's Reggie. <laughs> he makes puppets out of socks. <laughs> but little did he know, they weren't puppets, they were voodoo dolls. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I... <laughs> no, my dad was okay, even though he uh, wasn't exactly enthusiastic about me choosing a career as an actor. Of course, I don't blame him. I mean, the first acting job I had was an offbeat production of Alice in Wonderland. I played three parts. I played the King of Hearts, the Duchess, and Humpty Dumpty. That's right, I played an egg. How do you think this whole cholesterol scare got started? But playing the Duchess was the hardest. I, you know, I, um, I had to wear a wig and makeup and breasts. And... Don't laugh, I think you asked me out. And now, Michael Winslow. Originally, I am from Spokane, Washington, which is now Ashcan because of the volcano. It's not the end of the world, but you can see it from there. But the thing I like about coming down here and finally moving to California and all that was getting a place to live, right? I finally got this great house, right? And got these great things on it. In fact, there's enough for you here. Come on in, we'll have a little party in my house. First, crossing the street. I hate school. That's, 
And I live in a nice area. Great, let me turn off the alarm system and oh! <laughs> it's me, you idiot! <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> I haven't been properly introduced. Come on over here. <laughs> this is Break Dog. <laughs> Seriously, he break dances for a living. <laughs> Sorry. If you use your imagination and look carefully, he's got three tennis shoes and one leather glove on. Ready for your song? Okay. Let's have a little fun. Let's tune in here. Satellite television. <laughs> Midwest stations, too. <laughs> and now, Clint Eastwood, Bruce Lee, Cindy Lauper, <laughs> and Mr. T. few dragons more. Somewhere in the African jungles of Japan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gregory Hines horse, sorry. <laughs> And that's when he's noticed by the boys. Hey! <laughs> you! That's it for now, but be sure to check out other episodes of Laughs from the Hood.